Hello guys, Unofficial Pac-Man here, and today I bring you the review of the Lenovo Y50. Hey guys, I am going to start this review off of telling you how the support was from Lenovo and how I got the amazing deal I did get. Um, it started about a week ago, and I was looking through the computers, and I found that they came out with the Y50. Like, I never knew anything about this or anything. And I was talking with the sales rep, but they have, like, a live sales rep, and it's Lenovo's customer service is amazing. So, I was talking, I think his name was Albert, Alex, something like that. He was so nice. He gave me a deal, and I got it for twelve forty nine. Normally it was fourteen hundred, but I got it for twelve forty nine. So tech support is five out of five. Love it. Really happy on how they handled that. The computer that I bought included the fourth generation Intel Core i seven forty seven hundred HQ processor that runs at two point four gigahertz, and I think it turbo boosts to about three point two gigahertz. It runs Windows eight point one, which is a little sucky, but I mean it runs pretty well on here. It has a 15.6 full HD LED anti-glare backlit, and it does run at 1080p, and it has like a matte finish that is very anti-glare. It works really well. Uh, the graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 860M, and that has 4 gigabytes of VRAM. There was some speculation and some confusion about if it was Maxwell or Kepler, but it is Maxwell, I found out, and it runs a Maxwell architecture. It contains 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and that runs at 1600 megahertz. It has a hybrid 1 terabyte 5400 RPM plus an 8 gigabyte SSD that is a caching drive. It does not have an optical drive that is the Intel dual band wireless AC3160. I haven't had any problems with that. I download a lot of games, and I don't have a particularly good internet, but did not lose connection, nothing about that, so no problems from them. I heard some issues with the wireless card from the last version, like the 510 and the 410. It has Bluetooth version 4.0 in the network card. One year of replacement, like if anything goes wrong. It contains a 4-cell, 54-watt-hour lithium-ion battery. And they, they say you'll get 5 hours, but in real-life performance, I got about 3.5 on moderate use. And about, probably about like 2, two hours on gaming, so pretty good there. Now I'm going to talk about the shipping time, which for me, it was four and a half weeks, which was pretty long, longer than they expected it to get here. It had some issues going through customs. So it came from China. They didn't, there was no custom built. So it has to go through all these customs. And mine got stuck in the U.S. customs for about a week. So it, if yours doesn't get stuck there for as long, maybe it'll come in like about three and a half weeks. But I had to contact them and get it all resolved and they assured me that everything was all right and that i didn't need any more information so when i got the computer it came in just a normal brown box i mean it wasn't anything spectacular like alienwares or anything but i mean it, the packaging doesn't need to be amazing for a computer i mean i like the computer inside i mean i don't need good packaging but it was packaged well and no no computer problems there and when you first pull out this computer it is amazing it is a Sight to behold, it's super thin, it comes out with nice cold metal. First impressions were amazing, the screen was anti-glare, everything was shiny and new. Well, everything's way better in the beginning. So, first impressions and packaging, they were all very well, very easy to get out and all that. For the side ports, on the left side you have a charging dock, which it does not use the normal charging. It uses like this weird square, like interchangeable lock design. It's really nice though, I mean it charges really fast. You have your Ethernet, HDMI out, and two USB 3.0s. Colored red, which is fits the theme. The last ones were blue. I did not like that. You have your Kensington lock, a USB 2, and that is an always-on U U um, USB port, so that's good. An SD card reader and microphone and headphone jack. And on the front, there are notification light, and that's about it. And on the back, you have two really cool kind of speaker grills, and then the hen. You can't see any um, grills or anything for the venting. For the overall design of this computer, I was really impressed. Um, they pulled out a great design. Like, it contains the design that everyone, every other Lenovo computer has. 
It has nice sleek edges, sharp corners, red and black. It's everywhere. It has nice um, bumps on the back. The metal on the back of the screen is nice and crisscross design. And the bottom is actual metal. Like you can feel it. it's actual metal. It's not like plastic metal. So great quality and design from this laptop. Now talking about the hinge. The hinge is a single hinge. It's not a dual hinge. And it is, it's beautiful. I, I can almost open it up with one, with one hand. Like I do. I do open it with one hand. And it's. It's nice, no creaking sounds up and down. It's very nice. So, no problems with the hinge. For the speakers, the speakers are JBL2 speakers. Um, they're amazing. They're really good. They're really nice. Very hard-hitting bass. It's got a subwoofer under it. Very high quality, very loud. So, I was really impressed with the quality that they got out of a laptop speakers. And it has the nice grills and the red under it. Very beautiful, very nice, very crisp. Even at high levels, like sometimes laptop speakers can lose that fidelity. They kept it all the way, so really nice for that. For materials, the back is a, like, patterned aluminum, and on the bottom is a nice patterned aluminum, but I think it's really nice and really sturdy. The handrest and around the keyboard is a, like, a rubberized kind of feel, and the mouse pad is this nice smooth plastic, and on the top, is a glossy like piano plastic and around the bezels of the computer there are piano plastic too for the keyboard it is a accu type keyboard and it is it's really good i like it some people don't like it like they think it's a little mushy i haven't had any problems with that i think that the keyboard is nice there's a little flex whenever you go into the middle when you dip it in the middle but I mean, it, nothing takes away from how nice the keyboard is. It's chiclet style, so none of them are connecting. And it has a magnificent red backlight. Like, the most amazing backlight. Better than the Y50. It's so bright, so vibrant. The color accuracy of that is so perfect. Shines through, the, through and around the keys. Not as much bleed out as the last computer, so no problems there. Okay, for screen quality... It is the, a 15.6 full HD anti-glare backlit, the whole nine yards. It's beautiful. I expect that out of computers nowadays. They do also make a secondary version now, I think, that comes with a 4K screen, which I don't, I don't recommend that for computer buyers and gamers. For just browsing the internet, yes, but for gamers, with the 860M, I don't think you'll be able to run games at even like medium settings on 4K. I would just recommend getting the 1920 by 1080 until graphics cards get up to the 4K because you'll be pushing all them pixels. For the color accuracy of the screen, I was I was a little disappointed. Now that's maybe the main problem of this computer. I'm not saying it's like awful, but color accuracy is there. I mean, it's putting out those colors, but they're not vibrant. They're a little washed out and the viewing angles are terrible. Like I'm saying, if you want to watch videos with other people, you they got to be straight on. Because if you tilt back, forward, anything. Tilted forward, you'll get like a whole white screen. Tilted back, you'll get a whole black screen. In games, you kind of got to tilt down to not see the weird black color wrongness in the black at the top right corners. So, I was a little disappointed of how... Because they use a TM panel, not IPS. They saved a little money there. I just expected a little bit better for this amount of a computer. But for normal use, I, I think it's still good. For everyday performance, like web browsing, Microsoft Word, like recording all this stuff, and like going through the web watching YouTube videos, it's all great. I mean, it's awesome. The thinness makes you want to take it around more often than my Y500. It makes it very nice, a computer to be that thin. And it, the performance with the CPU and all that, it works perfectly fine. Everything's quick and snappy. No problems with that. For gaming performance, this is where this thing shines. It is a 860M with 4 gigabytes Maxwell chip. So in games, this thing is smooth at high. On some games, you can get ultra at 60 frames per second. But some games, you kind of got to lower it down high to get that 60 frames per second. So great quality. I'm about to show you some benchmarks on Bioshock Infinite, Metro Last Light, and Tomb Raider. See you then. Hello, guys. I am in Bioshock Infinite. And I will show you my settings right here. Now, you are going to see a 10% decrease. So, I'm running at 40 FPS. I will usually get um, about 60 on this part. So, it's about anti-aliasing on, texture detail ultra, normal, last stuff on. So, most everything on ultra. So, I was pretty, pretty impressed in Bioshock Infinite. It's not the hardest thing to play, but for mobile, it, it's pretty good.
and this is at 1080p so i am getting right here about 48 43 53 and it, it's really nice with the, the 860m with the four gigabytes it's using about 2900 megabytes and i'm getting about 54 50 so bioshock infinite runs amazing on this see you in metro last light okay guys i am in metro last light and this game runs pretty good i mean this is one of the harder games out of the bunch to play so yeah i don't know why right here i usually don't get this low frame rate so these are the settings that i have it on that work for me whenever i'm not in see and the um game quality is on high saa is off with the 1080p you won't notice that much texture filtering is af16 motion blur is low and tessellation is very high and phys x is on so you get them good explosions. So Metro Last Light works very well on this. I'm averaging about 46. And that is recording. I usually run at about 55. So Metro Last Light works good. See you in Tomb Raider. Okay guys, I am in Tomb Raider. And this game runs better than all of them. This is a pretty old game. But that doesn't mean that there are any good, good visuals. Which it does have. And right now I'm actually running at 60 frames per second. But these are the graphics options that I have for me. They're all ultra and stopping, and then the rest is that normal ultra and high. And it does have anti-aliasing, so all the post-processing is all good. It runs really nice. Really fast-paced, really nice, 60 frames per second, extremely smooth. Can't beat that out of a laptop. This is running on a laptop, guys. And this isn't even the best looking one. So, that was Tomb Raider. And that will end our benchmark. Okay, guys. That was the benchmark. I hope you guys enjoyed that little gameplay session of just me running around in some games, playing with my new laptop. That gameplay thing that I made a couple days ago with the Sniper Elite 3, that was played on this computer. So if you want to see other gameplay footages of this computer, you can look at that one. So now I'm going to talk about the heat performance of this computer. At normal use, just browsing the web and watching YouTube videos, I get around 45 to 57 degrees Celsius, which is really nice. And on heavy load, I get between 67 and 83, which is better than you can imagine. Like, it's amazing. High quality. They did really nice with the um, heating of this laptop. There is no vents pushing out the side like the old ones. It shoots out the back towards the hinge, keeping your hands and your mouse hand without burning it up like the old one used to do, especially to me. So the hottest part on the area is around the top where the vent is, but the keyboard never gets too hot that it's noticeable or unbearable. Like if you play for hours, you can kind of notice it unless say someone told you about it. So the heating of this laptop is on par of some of the best. So that was my in-depth review of the Lenovo Y50. My final words of this computer is they did an excellent job. I'm glad that I purchased this. I'm not regretting it and I'm not thinking that I should have bought another computer. They keep the thinness like the MSI, but they have the power and performance of Asus. And I was really impressed with what I got here. And it's pretty cheap. Only problems are the screen and no optical drive. But people can get over that. If you get, if you want a really nice screen, I don't know if this is really perfect for you. And if you use a lot of optical dri driven stuff, then I don't know if this is for you. But if you want a thin, portable gaming experience, then this is the best that you can get. So make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to get more gameplay, reviews, and much more. And as always, see you next time.